Are you interested in a truck camper? Well, this is the video for you. This is our one year review going from coast to coast and everywhere in between and all kinds of weather and climate and doing all kinds of different stuff of a truck camper. How did it work for us? Let's see. So we're sitting inside our 2006 North Star truck camper and it's a soft-sided pop-up truck camper that we ended up purchasing. And it's on top of our 2001 Ford F250 7.3 liter diesel. The reason we picked the 2001 Power Stroke diesel is because um, I bought it for my brother. And then the reason we picked this truck camper was it's the only one we could find. We drove 11 hours to get this truck camper yeah. So a year ago, the, the after effects of uh, the pandemic were still pretty hitting the RV industry pretty hard. And you could not find a truck camper anywhere around here. No, and any of the ones that were listed were outrageously priced because truck campers on average are not as popular as some of the other RVs. The reason we chose a truck camper is because we do a lot of outdoor stuff and we wanted the flexibility to still pull a trailer. So we have a boat and we like to fish and water ski and and pull a dirt bike trailer and all kinds of stuff is we wanted the flexibility to still pull a trailer. So that's one of the big reasons why we went with the truck camper. There's some instances where people can double up, like have a train of an RV pulling behind a truck and a trailer, but it's illegal in a lot of states and there's a lot of gray area and black. So we just wanted to avoid that and give just an open trailer hitch in the back. The other big reason is because of all the outdoor stuff we like to do. We love to camp on the beach from coast to coast. We've camped on the beach in Baja and we've camped on the beach in North Carolina mm -hmm. and everywhere in between Texas is with this short wheelbase and four wheel drive. We can go a lot of places that a regular RV can't even a four wheel drive like a U joint custom off road RV is going to have a super long wheelbase. You might not be able to get back to some of those cooler camping spots. So that's the other big reason we went with a truck camper. And we've been to Moab a couple of times and love Utah where rock crawling is um, pretty popular. And we wouldn't rock, call, rock crawl with a truck camper per se, but it gets you over a lot of obstacles that other RVs wouldn't be able to cross. The flexibility that a truck camper allows you really has been beneficial to us. We can park in places that you might not be able to normally. A lot of places, whether it's a national park or a state park or even downtown somewhere, it might say no buses, no RVs, no vehicles over 26 feet and have all these re uh, re rules and regulations where this truck is no longer than a 2001 F-250 long bed would be. It's an actual, it's a short bed F-250, but it, the truck camper hangs out another foot or two. But where the tires touch the ground this is no bigger than a, than a regular size vehicle so you can fit into any parking lot um, in any normal space you're not trying to find specific trailer parking or taking up multiple spaces in a parking lot maneuvering tight parking lots that are full is not nearly as stressful as if you were pulling a trailer or an RV the only extra stress is the the weight of the camper and it, you know it's going to be a little bit more top heavy we don't really notice it too much we added some uh, timber in uh, rubber bump stop enhancers and that's really kept down on there being really any body roll in this truck. The flexibility has really been amazing for us on this truck camper. So as we started kind of delving into those two pros of flexibility and like utility for our specific purposes, once you narrow it down to a truck camper, you kind of have two options of a hard side or a pop-up. And again, we went with the pop-up because that's all we could find and afford <laughs> at the time. A lot of times you'll see pop-ups, they're a little bit cheaper. And it's, you know, it's because you don't get all the cabinets back here. There's no cabinets here because this all has to collapse down to this level right here. Yeah. So there you lose, you lose storage space and then you don't have the immediate use. So if you were at the beach or something, you wanted to hop in here and change clothes with this one, you're going to be hunched over to about this level right here, <laughs> which is doable. And we have done it Yeah. and you can still sleep on this bed and access almost everything, open the refrigerator, but in the hard side, you could just hop back here and sleep real quick and you can't quite do that. You know, I can't access our bed or anything underneath it with the soft side. Peace, boo. <laughs> but then a pro that we came back to was that you're not as top heavy because your clearance is so much shorter than a hard side and it's less weight. So pop-ups tend to be lighter than a lot of hard side campers, especially when you're shopping in older campers because you don't have the money to buy a brand new one. 
The open feeling in here is not something that I thought I would appreciate as much as I do. When you're in here, you don't feel like you're in an enclosed little camper. Yeah. Because the cabinets aren't back here on the sides and it's windows all the way around. A lot of hard side campers might just have one window in the front or one here or one here. And this, it's 360 view. So in some of the pretty places we've been, whether New Mexico or beaches mm -hmm. or watching the snow come down, it's really awesome and really makes you feel like you can see everything. And not only from a pretty view perspective and cross breeze, which is really nice, but also yeah. from a security point of view. So if you're out in the middle of BLM land or you're out in the middle of nowhere, I can see truck headlights coming up from any direction, which is really nice. It's not just one one window I'm peeking through if you're sleeping. Yeah. I can open my eyes from being asleep and look in 360 degrees, which has been really awesome. And the windows, there's a screen and then there's a privacy level and then there's the full cover. So you have a shade or privacy option. It's not just a open or close. There's a, you know, another tint level between the outside and inside. But really emphasis on the fact that I don't feel like I'm in a tin can in one of these. It's super light in here because you get light kind of coming through the canvas and all of the windows. It does feel a lot more open and maybe makes it feel like a much larger space than what it actually is. Now with all the pros of a truck camper, um, you know, it can, it's got a shorter wheelbase than a Sprinter van. You have true four wheel drive with a low range. Um, you still have a good tow rating all the pros we can park it anywhere mm -hmm. but some of the cons truck campers are hard to find if you go to a camping world or any big uh, rv distrib distribution facility, you're gonna find millions of bumper pulls millions of fifth wheels you're gonna find sprinter vans all over the place which you're gonna have a hard time finding is mm -hmm. truck campers you might see a hundred bumper pulls and there'll be one or two truck campers over in the corner so they're way harder to find and then that inflates the prices on the second hand market also so in this specific truck camper, we actually had one of the tie downs or anchor points rip out. But this is our rear driver's side turnbuckle uh, attachment point uh, that has ripped out of the camper. And we found out the hard way that um, RV repair facilities don't really want to repair truck campers. They're not very common so the familiarity with repairing a truck camper um, might not be in a lot of facilities and it's also really expensive um, because it takes somebody that already has experience with a truck camper to fix it. One of the cons that we thought was going to be on our list before we actually got a truck camper was the noise of the canvas flapping. So a hard side obviously doesn't have canvas that's going to be affected by wind or weather and we were kind of concerned if the canvas was going to make noise while you sleep in any wind so any beach is going to have a little breeze and uh absolutely no issues whatsoever not saying that it doesn't get loud <laughs> we've been in here for some storm warnings and some tornado warnings I thought this thing was going to rip apart a couple of times it was blowing so hard swaying the whole truck back and forth yeah but we never had any issues from the sides themselves another thing that you might want to consider if you're looking at a truck camber is you're going to need more truck whatever think truck you think is enough truck you probably need one size up um, we're in an f-250 and it does have the camper package and it does have some uh it does have the timber and rear bump stops to, to help from sway and the camper package has bigger uh, has like I think one more leaf spring pack in the front but we're still right at our max payload yeah um, by the time you put 30 gallons of water in you put everything your dog food and your cooler full of ice and water and your tools and all that weight starts to add up you're gonna be max it's gonna be hard not to max your payload but with an f-150 or a Jeep Cherokee or something else or Forerunner, you could get a lot more space in a bumper pull trailer. Yeah. You'd have a lot more room, a lot more storage space. So just there's more square footage, honestly. Oh, for sure. For, for the, just the cost. The cost per square foot on a truck camper is way higher. And then the vehicle you need to pull that square footage, because all that square footage is, of course, in the truck bed. It's on the axles of the, the vehicle. It's all that weight. So you, you're going to need a bigger truck. So you probably, you're going to be looking at F-250. I know people put these in Tacomas and stuff if you got a yeah. lot smaller one and that's, that's doable. But most people, most truck campers are built for a three quarter ton and up. Yeah. So you're going to need more tow vehicle and the bump and the square footage you get for the vehicle size is a lot smaller. 
if you're trying to get a smaller truck camper into a smaller truck, you're going to be paying much more money because you're going to get lightweight aluminum metal frames, not wood. Speaking of metal frames, this whole <laughs> thing is made out of wood and I didn't know that when we got it. And when we hit that speed bump and we ripped out our anchor tie down point in Mexico, uh -huh. I quickly realized looking up inside there that everything is made out of wood. Yes. And then we've had a couple of leaks pop up just you know this thing's 20 something years old or almost 20 years old yep and just over the years when the silicone starts to go you start realizing what's wood and what's not and everything in here is wood everything um, absolutely everything the, the <laughs> attachment points of the legs is all just into wood and we've got one that i am very nervous about <laughs> that has had some water damage and then we've got some more water damage i just found today um, yeah. these these older campers are so thirsty they're thirsty girls <laughs> It's almost just like they just look for water and just draw it in wherever they can. So They're just craving water. <laughs> if you do have the money, I would definitely recommend get something that has a, an aluminum frame. Yes. But for most people, that is way out of Your the average range. person's budget. If you're, yeah. if you're rocking a 20-year-old truck like us and 20-year-old campers, you're probably not somebody who can afford the aluminum framed campers. But if I yeah. could, I would love to have something that, you know, the, the main structural parts were aluminum or steel and not, and not wood. Yeah. But I can't fault it. It is 20 years old and it's been road hard and put up wet. We've put hard on it now this last year. It hasn't been under a, a shed or an awning at any point in the last year. Yeah. It's been all over salt water and free, sub-freezing temperatures, 100 degree temperatures. It has been all across the board, all environments, all weather. It has experienced it all with absolutely no cover whatsoever. Some upgrades that this camper does have that is not standard on all campers is this does have a uh, AC unit and this AC unit is like 14,000 BTUs mm -hmm. um, and this thing has been awesome. We didn't think we'd use it as much as we did until we were on the North Carolina coast and the no CM Nats came out like crazy and those things are the devil incarnate. They are awful and they fit through the screen holes. So with it being 95 degrees we couldn't we couldn't have the windows down and get the nice ocean breeze. It was sweltering here. So we could run our AC, which was life-saving because yes. those things were coming through our screens and devouring us, which was absolute misery. Yes. So how we ran that was we had a portable generator. We use a Champion 2500 watt dual fuel generator. The thing weighs like 39 pounds. It's small. It's, it's a, I guess it would be a clone of the Honda. The Honda's like $2,000, 1500, 2000 for the, a similar generator. And that tiny little generator will click over this huge RV full, this is just like a bigger RV AC unit that would be put in like a much bigger camper. Yeah. It's way overpowered for in here. But our little tiny generator weighs 39 pounds, runs it. And yep. it'll run on a gallon of gas for like five hours with the AC on. Yeah, for full AC. If you just have the fan on, it runs for almost like 10 or 12 hours. So if you're gonna be somewhere hot, and you have bugs, you're somewhere on the East Coast especially, <laughs> we highly recommend one with an AC. It, it makes your camping season so much longer. Now you yeah. can go full through the summer and you don't have to worry about bugs coming inside your screens. Um, so we would, we would recommend that. that, that AC has been awesome. So the other thing to note is that some truck campers come insulated and some do not. Some are rated for three seasons, some are rated for four seasons. So ours is technically not insulated or rated for four season. However, we were able to withstand negative temperatures multiple times because of two things. We have a diesel heater, which uh, replaced the propane heater that was standard in this specific truck camper. And we also have in our AC unit, a low heat setting. I highly recommend the diesel heater upgrade. If your camper doesn't have one, or if you're looking at diesel heater, we have a hundred dollar diesel heater in here and I love it. It's on the same, this truck is also diesel mm -hmm. and this diesel heater will run forever on a couple gallons. Yeah. And it's a nice dry heat. There's no moisture in it and it's very quiet and it's very hot. The other nice thing about it, instead of having so many things run off your propane tank, we like to have uh, some redundancy in our yeah. camping. And so it's nice to have our heat source being run differently than our grill and our hot water source because if we run out of propane we lose everything well now if we run out of propane we still have heat yes. or if we run out of heat we still have our propane and that thing's super hot the other nice thing is is finding propane sometimes can be hard the fill for this is on the same side of our fill for our fuel tank for the truck mm -hmm. so anytime i'm filling up i can just pull boop, the hose over boop. and add a, a, another gallon of diesel fuel and that's so much easier than trying to find a tractor supplier or somewhere to top up your propane tank so highly recommend the diesel heater yep 
And again, this AC unit has a low heat setting. The only time we used that is when we were, the few times we were in a campground and we were hooked up to the electrical grid. And then you just keep it running while it's cold outside. Um, and it kept it pretty nice. So uh, in New Mexico, for example, it was about uh, 15 degrees outside, but inside the camper felt about 60 or 70. It was quite warm and that was just keeping that low setting on. So even though it's not hard sided and there is canvas, so it doesn't keep heat very well, it was still comfortable. We only run the heat strip inside of our AC here, our fan, when we have shore power, it just yeah. draws too much electricity. Yeah. That constant 1500 watt draw, plus the fan, you know, it's, it's over 1500 watts is, is just too much to have that generator winding all the time. But that's when the diesel heater comes in because our diesel heater runs off of our battery. Just the battery that this came with, we have one deep cycle battery in mm -hmm. here that's charged by two uh, 100 watt solar panels. And this, this, this battery will run that diesel heater all night, no problem, and keep you nice and warm. And there's no generator running, there's no noise. You so can, quiet. Super stealthy. We camped at Bass Pro, Walmart, lots of different places when we had that diesel heater running and it's super quiet. The other unique thing about this specific truck camper uh, is that it has an indoor and outdoor shower. And we've used both. We actually didn't think that we would be using the indoor shower much, but when you're in more public places, like on a, a beach where you don't really want to be naked in front of everybody, you can have a shower in here. Is it the biggest shower? Absolutely not. Are you kind of crammed in a little bit? Yes, but if you've spent six days on a beach and you'd really like to get the salt water and sand off and just feel a little refreshed, it's quick, it's easy, and it's convenient. We also love this little bath area over here because it has a, a cassette toilet and when we first got this we thought we'd never touch it we ended up touching it a lot <laughs> it's a number one only yeah. i mean you could number two but it's a number one only for us and for most people yeah but it's super handy let's say you're staying at a walmart or a cracker barrel overnight which we've done a whole lot to just walk back here and take a leak without having to go knock on a door somewhere, having to walk into Walmart at two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. which a lot of Walmarts aren't 24 hour anymore. Yeah, they're closed. So where do you where do you go? To wake up and just take a leak in your camper is super convenient. And then yeah. the cassette, you just pull it out. You don't have to touch anything and you can just dump it straight into a normal toilet and yep. flush it and you're good to go. It's so the cassette toilet, we highly recommend the cassette toilet, the diesel heater upgrade and the AC. We have really used those three things a lot. Yeah. So let's just cover one of the um, unexpected cons that is very frustrating to us that we did not anticipate. And that is these old pop-up systems use this cranking mechanism to make the top rise and open up your camper. And the metal in these, the metal that is the teeth is much softer than the metal that is in the gear system. Yeah. And so what happens is these teeth get worn out and they mushroom out and it happens what's happened right now. We've got like three of these laying around. <laughs> these things are like 50 or $60 a piece. It takes them months to order and get them yeah. shipped in is it gets stuck. This is supposed to come out really easy, but those teeth mushroom and they get stuck inside the track system. The other thing is it does is it slips. Yes. And as you're cranking this thing up, when these teeth slip, as you're cranking it up, there's nothing holding the roof up. It's going to slam gonna down. Drop. It makes it's going to hit you drop. in the head. Yeah. yeah. So I've gotten the, the hand, I hold a hand here or a hand on the on roof top, yeah. and I'm at least trying to slow it down or if I feel if it's going to slip. And so the, the, the raising and lowering mechanism on these older campers is not so great, especially if you're doing it every single day. Like yeah. we, like when we're traveling a lot, we'll, we'll raise it just to sleep and then we'll set everything back down and keep going. And that repeated use really wears out these things. And this thing, we got it new right before we went on this last little trip and it's already worn out. Yeah, it's already stuck in there. So um, we did not anticipate that. We hadn't really read any uh, cons mentioning that specific uh, system. But if you do have the money for a slightly newer camper that does not have this crank system that has the um, electric lifting or pop-up, that to me, even though I've never used one, seems better. That's just something specific to these older pop-ups. Yeah. Um, Still, I still like pop-ups. Oh yeah, definitely. This is a definitely a headache and a uh, thumbs down for us. We're also new to RF, RV refrigerators. This is gonna be a con. These things suck. I don't care if it's running <laughs> off propane. I don't care if it's running off of DC or AC. This is a three-way refrig refrigerator. It seems to suck no matter what. It takes yeah. it like 24 hours to cool down. And when it does cool down, we mean cool. It doesn't get super cold in yeah. here. It's gonna be like, 50 degrees inside of here mm -hmm. it's never super cold the freezer if you let it sit long enough which is a very small space a lot of times will cool down we've looked on the forums and 
is apparently that's just how these things are designed. These compressorless refrigerators, uh, evaporation refrigerator, however they're they're called, just yeah. don't seem to work real well. So we use more ours more like like a storage pantry. Yeah, it's like and a storage cabinet with we, shelves. We just use a regular cooler and get ice. Is yeah. what we've been doing. Yeah, and then we found out the hard way that these fridges are super picky about being level. So when you're not in a campground, like we are most of the time, we're out on different areas. Um, you try to make the truck as level as possible, but if it's slightly off one way or the other, other, this fridge will not cool at all. As far as how to attach to the truck, we have had absolute fantastic luck with the torque lift stuff. So we use the torque lift frame mounted tie downs. Those mm -hmm. things are so rock solid and they're removable so when you the, the bracket that installs which you don't have to drill any holes which is super nice yeah that I is really nice hate drilling holes we installed a front hitch on this and when you're drilling holes to this thick steel it is awful um, yeah. so not having to drill any holes bolt them in super sturdy and then the part that the camper actually hooks hooks to comes out with a pin and so when the camper's not on here you can't even tell they're there the other torque lift part is the actual arms that hold the truck camper to the to the truck tie downs yeah and those are super nice they're they're stainless steel they're lockable you can't just yank them off it's not chains rattling around there's nothing to rust and then once you get them properly set which takes a couple seconds they're locked in forever yeah and they have like built you don't in, have to adjust them never have to adjust them they have built-in springs so they'll take the shock so mm -hmm. as your truck frame is flexing around and you hit some bumps there's a built-in uh spring. spring inside there that gives them some cushion so you don't have what we had happen, which was not Torque Lift's fault. We just hit a pothole that we didn't see, and yeah. the, there's nothing that's going to stop that. And it was weak wood. Yeah, it was already it right soft. Out. Yeah. But if you just have, like we thought originally, you could just put a chain from one end to the other, the solid mount with no flex in it, you're going to be off-road and twisting and flexing, and you're going to rip you're out. You're going to rip something, something on out of your one end camper. or the other. <laughs> it's going to rip. So we highly recommend these built-in springed Torque Lift uh, tie-downs. Yeah, they've been really great. One of the downsides that we also didn't realize is that if you are going into campground settings, there are campgrounds that do not allow truck campers, period. Um, it doesn't matter the year, if they're newer or older, they just don't allow truck campers. Seems to be a Florida issue. <laughs> We've been in Florida a lot lately and Florida seems to be really picky about their campers RVs. and rv stuff yeah those campgrounds that didn't allow truck campers also didn't allow campers older than a specific year so if you're only going to be hitting campgrounds we wouldn't recommend a truck camper anyway yeah we wanted the truck camper because we can go off road with it you still keep a pretty short wheelbase you know it's four wheel drive we can pull the boat if we need to throw the dirt bike the, on the front yeah, the motorcycle if you're just staying in campgrounds a nice paved campground or a nice loop you just be better off with a trailer. It's easier to unhook and yeah. use your main vehicle to yeah. get around town. You got more space, you have more storage. If you're just looking at campgrounds, do not look at truck campers. Yeah, I I wouldn't want this if I was staying in a campground because a lot of people that are in RV life, is it's a portable house. Um, this isn't really a house to us. It's um, just like a glorified tent, like like glamping. It's just very comfortable glamping. So if, if you're if you're an RV person or looking at staying at Myrtle Beach for two weeks in the summer at a nice campground, truck camper is not the way to go. 100% yeah. a, a bigger camper. But if you enjoy getting out there on BLM land and back in the middle of nowhere and you want to take your boat with you, yeah. then truck camper, hands down. Going on hands forest down. service roads. Can't beat it. Yeah. This is, there's so much flexibility with outdoor activities and where you can go with these. And if you can afford it, get you some electric jacks. <laughs> we use this truck for work um, when we're flipping pallets by buying liquidation pallets or uh doing anything else with the truck for, stuff if, if you need to use your truck for other things regularly and still want to use your truck camper regularly it is annoying we yes. have hand cranks you have to go around all four corners and you know slowly get it up and level and get it off the truck and pull it out from underneath if you have electric jacks you can hit one button and it picks it up, up. keeps it level yep. and it's off the truck and you're not walking around in circles for 30 minutes so if you have the money Get you some electric jacks and get you one slightly newer that doesn't have this system to <laughs> this raise it lower. This crank system for the actual yeah. pop-up features. If we could have a 10-year newer one with those upgraded features, uh, 
that would be it. Uh, we would love it. Yeah. But all this stuff's doable. Yeah. If, if you're a little bit handy, which I'm, I'm, I'm only teeny bit handy, <laughs> and and you and you can you can you can you can sling silicon here and there, and yeah. you know fix some. Uh, we had a sink start leaking, uh, sink sink start leaking, and a few small things here and there. An older one's fine. You can you can put your toe in the water and see if you like it. Because a new yeah. truck camper's like. 40 grand it's for a cheaper one. It's super expensive, especially ones that we would want. Something with a metal frame, you're looking at $40,000 easy. It's a rich man's game, but if you yeah. just want to dip your feet, your, your toes in the sand like us, you got an old truck, you got an old three quarter ton or something, and you're, look, and you're looking at getting into this. Yeah. For a year, we've had a blast. Of course, we've had some little problems. That's all RVs, though. I mean, it's people a, with hundred thousand yeah. dollar electric slide outs have to take them to get repaired all the time it's, it's a 20 year old camper yeah. you know what you're getting into there's going to be water leaks there's going to be little issues here and there but for the most part this has been pretty reliable it's not you know just collapsed on us and left us stranded it's yeah. just little annoyances and the dog loves this the dog loves the truck camper <laughs> this this turns into a table but we just leave it down all the time because this is our dog's bed um, she stays down here most of the time, so we quit ever using it as a table, and we just sit outside. It's when you're a yeah. truck camper, you feel like you're kind of a. And it's nice to get outside and sit sometimes. So yeah, I think that's another point too. If if you have a truck camper, I don't really think you're staying inside of it a lot of the time. Um, no. If you're out exploring anyway, the amount of time that you're going to be spending in your truck camper is going to be less than what you're spending outside. So if you plan on staying inside more often, then obviously more square footage and more space and more comfort items are going to be higher on your priority list. Whereas we're outside all the time, so as long as we have a bed and a place for food and a place to sleep or store clothes or whatever, that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Go buy a truck camper, or not. <laughs> or not, but I hope this helped you. All right, see you guys next video.